It's the last day of E3 2014. I'm here with Wes Fenlon. Hey guys. Sam Roberts hey. from PC Gamer UK. How's it going? Fantastic, thanks man. How's your E3 been? Pretty good so far, yeah, yeah. So we got a few more things to show here, but uh, I want to talk about the best stuff we've seen so far. For me, that's Rainbow Six. I wrote a preview on our site for this terrific, uh, focused, competitive multiplayer game. It's refreshing to see another one of those. You were so excited during the press conference when that happened. I, it's, I went back to play it twice. That's pretty, that's, I don't know, that's pretty rare. It's hard to find time to do that at E3. Um, I felt that passionately about it, but, you know, five on five, single life, uh, asymmetrical gameplay where the, um, the defending team is barricading a house. They're sort of fortifying a position, setting up barricades, um, setting traps, barbed wire, uh, and the attacking team, you know, they only have three minutes to recover a hostage from inside this house. Right. So it's just very, you know, it's a lot of strategy in a shooter, you know, unlike Call of Duty, arguably, unlike Battlefield, where it's kind of just open-ended, free-for-all, have to be very deliberate about how you approach, how you attack. How you blow a hole through the ceiling and drop down yeah. like a ninja. Well, their, their destruction system seems, I mean, peerless, honestly. Uh, yeah, it seems like a game made for Evan Larty, in, <laughs> in that it really taps into your love of competitive shooters, you know? It's true, yeah. it's true. So yeah, that, that's the big standout game for me. There was more, though. Yeah, what else did you guys see? So I haven't seen quite as many games as you guys. I've got a couple exciting ones left for today towards the end of the day, but The Witcher 3 is the best thing I've seen at the show for sure. I went in really trying to scrutinize it as much as possible because the trailers for it look so amazing. And I just thought there's no way this game can look absolutely as good as the trailers. And it didn't quite, it was like 90% of the way there. It didn't quite run at like a solid frame rate. It had like a couple really tiny issues, but it still looked amazing. And so I, and then at the end of the demo, I got to talk to some of the developers a little bit and they were like, oh yeah, this looks like garbage compared to what it's gonna look like the final game. It's not optimized at all. And it, it feels like The Witcher in an open world. Like the combat is still really fast and brutal. Like the quests look the same, the way it's just like the characters animate and the dialogue. It's all really cool. If you like The Witcher, it's it's gonna be amazing. That's cool. Uh, by comparison, uh, me and Evan both saw Dragon Age Inquisition this week, which yeah. again is doing the whole kind of open world adaptation of a previously linear RPG. And uh, the kind of storytelling potential of it and the sort of scale of it, uh, I felt was kind of comparable to The Witcher. Um, and really a big surprise, I think, in terms of the drama of the storytelling as well. It looks like the most kind of credible Bioware game, narratively speaking, that we've seen so far. Yeah, it's, it's, it's still surprising me just how different that game feels from Dragon Age 1 and 2. I mean, they've, they've really taken the time necessary to do it right, and, you know, make it this big open world game. It kind of remains to be seen how much exploration, I think, is in Dragon Age Inquisition, you know, kind of how, how Skyrim it goes on, on that spectrum. But, uh, you know, you can gather herbs off the ground and craft stuff. I don't know, that's yeah. that's getting there, yeah. It was just kind of seeing cool stuff like um, being able to fight individual limbs of the dragon to kind of yeah. make it collapse to the floor and then kind of go in and make your killing moves to its weak spots and stuff like that. It just seems there's a lot more strategy employed compared to Dragon Age 2, where a lot of people thought it was a bit too kind of console friendly in terms of it being an action game. Uh, really kind of like, yeah, uh, ramp that stuff back up and yeah, it's looking fantastic. It's noticeable that they're running on Frostbite, which of course is the same tech driving battlefield, you know. It's so pretty. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. amazing. It looks amazing. It really does. But uh, you got to see Batman as well, I did get right? to see Batman, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, speaking of kind of ridiculously kind of detailed open worlds, like um, I got to actually drive the Batmobile this time as well, uh, and it does just kind of look amazing. Like you, could, you switch between these two modes, uh, battle mode and pursuit mode, um, so it's basically kind of combat and driving, essentially. But you can do things like create ramps using like a grappling hook and stuff like that. Um, there's a move you can do, a combo, where you throw a guy in the air, and at the end the Batmobile just kind of spam him while in midair. And like he's kind of like an AI buddy. Just reminds me a little bit of a dog from Half Life. It's yeah. just yeah, it looks really really cool. So Batman's not technically killing people, but he's kind of killing people this time around. Yeah, and he also <laughs> rams a guy's head into a fuse box. And like I don't remember Batman ever doing that. You know, that's kind of news to me. But um, yeah, yeah, like he's just gone ultra brutal, brutal this time for some yeah, reason. The Batmobile has a gun turret on top of it, but it's like <laughs> and rockets I think, but it's like they're all concussive or like knockout <laughs> rockets. Yeah, he's fighting it's drone tanks as well. I don't remember Batman fighting drone tanks. But yeah, there's a whole like paramilitary organization uh, with the Arkham Knight as the sort of 
one of the lieutenants of the main villain, I guess. Yeah, yeah, he's in game. league with Scarecrow, who's kind of like right. whispering instructions in his ear. Right. Um, but it's really kind of effective. Like everything they've done with it is is just kind of, I guess, the Batman, the Batmobile stuff with the shooting. It does seem a bit out of character for Batman, but in terms of a feedback loop, I think that they probably need that in the game. Yeah. Um, so I don't hold it against them. And technically, he doesn't kill anyone, but I just, I'm sure he just kind of ruins their, the rest of their lives from the kind of injuries that they sustain from his attacks. <laughs> but yeah, it looked really cool, man. Uh, Rock City's right. best yet, I'm sure. Great. Batman won't kill, but he will ruin your life. <laughs> <laughs> so one of our surprises, Sam, we sat in on a Crytek meeting together. Yeah. Uh, the guys down in Crytek in Austin. Right. Uh, yeah. You, you know, used to work on Darksiders, working on a four-player co-op game called Hunt. And yeah, we, I think we were sort of not expecting something so good. I mean, it's what this showed was, uh, you know, it's it's a randomly generated uh, four-player. Horror shooter, I yeah, guess. Yeah, horror shooter, third person. It actually felt like surprisingly like Resident Evil 4 or 5. Yeah. Uh, you know, kind of over the shoulder perspective, climbing through window ledges and stuff like that. But it especially felt that way because almost immediately we had like enemies throwing hand sickles and farm equipment at us through the air. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Even the enemy types were a little bit kind of, yeah. Yeah. There's a big, big guy with a hammer chasing you. Um, but yeah, like very, you know, we only saw about a 20 minute demo, but it looked super promising, set in like these, this swampy version of Louisiana, very gothic. Yeah. Uh, eight, 18th century, I guess. Yeah, randomly generated levels that last for like 10 to 20 minutes. So basically, uh, yeah, there's a kind of one objective that stays the same throughout the mission, but everything else around that objective is just randomly generated. Um, and like, we didn't really kind of see how that would work in terms of like variety, but they kind of told us about, uh, you know, the kind of parameters they set where one in 1,000 matches might have something that, you know, the other matches don't have. That kind of stuff sounds really promising to me. It sounds like they've got the kind of right algorithms to create an interesting game. And it just looked like a really kind of fun shooter as well, like the respawn yeah. mechanic. Uh, when you respawn, you, um, two examples we were shown is like you kind of awaken a coffin or you're hanging upside down and you can't actually carry on until someone uh, kind of releases you from either of those things so you can kind of torture your allies um, and it's just a really neat touch and you're kind of looking out from the coffin in first person onto what's going on just stuff like that shows they've got a really kind of different take on a load of existing ideas when it comes to co-op shooters definitely speaking of algorithms what do you guys think about no man's sky having seen the trailers and it being here are you as pumped as the, the entirety of the internet seems to be about no man's sky I think so. I mean, it looks it looks like just amazing in terms of the, the stuff they are generating. I don't really know what the game is as such, but I'm kind of figuring that doesn't matter. It just seems to be about exploration. Um, yeah, I'm not really kind of sure on the details of that stuff, but man, it's just so pretty. And yeah, kind of amazing that it's made by this really small group of people. I don't quite know how they're doing it, yeah. but it's really impressive. I'm 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 optimistic, but I'm still you know I, I need to play it myself before I can say you know it's it's tough because like with exploration if that's a focus of your game either the the art and the world needs to be intrinsically amazing to which just, it kind of is it, at this it point is yeah. in trailer form though so right. it, like it remains to be seen like how much of that art is duplicated how much of it is reused like what's what's what are the variety of worlds that you're going to and if if like it isn't sort of like emphasizing exploration in that way it needs to be through like finding stuff and objectives and like picking up items more gamey stuff so, but either way, it's like a, I'm, it's an amazing project. I'm glad it exists. Yeah. So, what else have you guys seen to, to close out the show? What's left? Yeah, uh, I'm hoping to go check out the new monster in Evolve. You know, Evolve continues to look really good and terrific. Uh, asymmetrical four versus one shooter from Total Rock. The guys that make Le Left 4 Dead, of course. Yeah. Uh, I guess they have like a sort of Cthulhu-like flying monster called the the, the Kraken. The Kraken. I know. I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah, it's broadcasting on that massive screen in the hall, right? And it does just look really cool. And yeah. I think that that's the kind of the appeal of Evolve really does hinge on the quality of those of the encounters with those monsters. Um, so yeah, it's great to see them showcasing another one. I kind of worried we'd just see the Goliath, the one they revealed first, until yeah. like the the game came out, and then there'd be like three. So this at least seems kind of promising to me. Yeah, it's out in October, but I don't know. Does that kind of wrap up our our best stuff of the show, guys? I think that's probably it. Yeah, all right. Well, let's head out and go see some more before we fly off to the airport. Uh, check out the rest of our coverage on PCGamer.com. we got previews and coverage and trailers of everything else we've mentioned. See you there.